in order to derive the Maxwell's equations, we will start with this Maxwell equations and this time we will cover it more comprehensively. So, the very first thing that we will cover will be electrostatics. Electrostatics. And then the next half will be magnetostatics. So, the very first thing that we are covering in electrostatic, you know that electro the charge and then static which is stationary which is not moving so we will start the first thing with charge then what is charge normally be represented by the symbol q so the very first thing that we know about a charge that it is in intrinsic property it is in intrinsic property secondly this charge is conserved conserved means we cannot create this charge we cannot destroy this charge so it can change from one body to another body when we neutralize something then it means negative charge was there which made our positive charge neutralize so charge should be existing somewhere we haven't created it or if for example on a neutral body charge is appearing so what does it mean means we have removed positive charge from it so that's why negative charge is over there or if positive charge appear on that body the other way around negative you have removed the positive and if it is positive there then you have removed the negative so charge is conserved it cannot be created it cannot be destroyed the other thing that we know about charge is that it is transferable this will move from one body to another body we say that it exists in positive and negative combination positive similar charges we see that they will repel each other while unlike charges will attract each other so this attraction and repulsion we will study the other thing is that the minimum value of this charge is 1.6 degrees to the power minus 19 coulomb which is a very very small charge and this we call the electronic charge this value is very small because it is we say 1 over 10 power 19 <coughs> of coulomb so it's a very very small value the very important thing is that it is discrete or uh, it is quantized what is meant by discrete this charge will shift as a magnitude equal to this one not a fraction of it but it will shift or it will transfer as a whole it will not transfer in pieces here so this is discrete or we say the charge is quantized this will be n times e where n will be an integer n will be 1, 2, 3, and so on. It will be an integer. So the charge is quantized, or we call this one discrete. Now, you may say that this is not the minimum value. Minimum value, then this exists. Where? Well, a 
if I consider quarks, then you know a proton is carrying the same charge. But proton is made of three quarks. So those quarks are having, let's say, one over three charge each are we say plus minus two by three or plus minus one over three. Then we know that this charge does exist because it is 2e and 1e. But the problem is the quarks are not existing independently. They are always coupled together, clustered together. There is no, you can say, single independent quark. And for that reason, we say that this is the basic energy. <coughs> It is quantized, it is conserved, and its minimum possible value is this one. 1.5 10 raised to the power minus 19 doesn't exist because it is smaller in magnitude than this one. It will be charged with either 1.6 10 power minus 19 or 3.2 10 power minus 19 or you can say. 4.8 10 power minus 19. In between values are not present. That is what is meant by a state. <coughs> now when you place a charged particle, then this charged particle is healing its electric field. This is the geometrical interpretation of the electric field. So there are infinite such lines, but Geometrically, we represent this thing by many few. And this field will be in the surrounding of it. And the field will be equal to the electric field as we have derived this one. It will be 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. If this view is Q, so this will be Q over R square in R it will be radially outward. This field will go to zero if R will go to infinity. Infinity is not something you can say it will be very, really, very really far. Infinity is the limit where the effect of it will go to zero. So this charge will have some field in its surrounding. And to find out this field, you will have to bring another charge, which you call a test charge, and this test charge will feel the effect of it. That there is another charge. And the interaction between these two is given by F equals 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught and Q with Q naught by R squared and this will also be in R vector direction. So from this I can write that F is actually equal to F this one F is equal to E in Q naught times Q naught times E. So, the electric field I can define, in other words, is this is the force per unit charge. Electric field is the force per unit charge. Now, this is the very famous Coulomb's law, and it gives the interaction of forces in between. So we will have to uh, write here again here. You can write this one Q1, Q2 divided by R square, where Q1 is your one charge, Q2 is your another charge. So you can write this one is that this is the mutual interaction of the two. We say normally in Coulomb's law that this interaction is 
mutual. So Coulomb's law is actually giving you the mutual force between two charged particles. What is meant by mutual? It means mutual means there is no partnership. Partnership is always on a percentage, like 10 to 90, 50, 50, 40, 60. This is partnership. Mutual means in which there is no, you can say, observation of the partnership. Mutual. You cannot determine this charge is experiencing more force than the other. It's mutual. So, how much force this one is exerting on this one or this one on this one, we cannot say this thing, but it's a mutual force between the two. And this mutual force we are taking for, you can say, point charges. Another important thing here is the point charge. And what's the reason for considering point charges? Because we know that if one charge is here and the other charge is here, so the distance that we are taking between the two charges is actually from center to center. This is R, between the centers of the charges. And if I consider charges other than point charges, point is something ideal because it doesn't exist. Radius, when the radius of the sphere goes to zero, you call it point. So, that zero means goes to zero. So, it may be the point zero, 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 one, or it may be some hundred zeros and then one. There is no limit on it. So, point is something ideal. And when you consider point, then the distance between the center to center or the surface to surface will remain the same. And in order to exclude the internal radii of the charge, we say that the charges are actually point charges. Another thing that we know about this one is that the the distance we have covered. The other thing is the R square. That why this distance is coming to be one more R square. So this is the inverse square law, the really famous law. But actually these are polynomials. And it can be one over R, it can be one over R cube. So both are possible. It means not only one over R, but one over R is also possible are some other terms and the reason for that is that when the distance actually does matter when the charges are much much closer than the uh, dimensions of their size then it is one over r and if they are much apart it should be one over r cube and then the other terms so the Coulomb's law is a law under certain limitations. It is not like that it is unique and it can be applied to any situation. It can then give you approximate result. Somewhere it may give you even the wrong result if the situation is different. So the chart is interaction you can measure with the help of Coulomb's law. The electric field needed, then it is actually the force per unit charge. And now, is our aim is to go to Maxwell equations, so we will not spend much time on Coulomb's law, electric field, or these things, but just to understand them. <coughs> Similarly, we can have the electric field is now there and what about the two things that are associated with this electric field which is the divergence 
divergence and curve of electric field. Divergence you know, the curve you know, there are two very fundamental theorems that we studied. The fundamental theorem of gradient, the fundamental theorem of divergence and the fundamental theorem of curve. So at the moment is we are discussing the divergence and curl of E. So I will write those two fundamental theorems. And those two fundamental theorems are that if I take the divergence of any physical quantity V in a volume D tau and it's a volume integral, then this thing is exactly the same if I take a closed surface integral, right, and I take this physical quantity is a dot product with the cross sectional area, then both will be equivalent, both will be the same. The divergence of something is equal to the flux of that quantity. A quantity is there and that quantity is diverging. How much it is diverging in a given volume? You can find out that thing by finding out the flux of that quantity which is going out. So this can give this is called the divergence theorem. 